Good morning. Welcome to your Tuesday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum here with some words of wisdom to get you started. I get a haircut on Thursday and I can't wait because I've got curls going everywhere. <laughs> so, hope you all had a great day yesterday. I hope today is a marvelous day. We've got a wonderful reading today that I think is going to be food for thought. Good morning, Abigail. Glad you are here. Welcome. You're the first one popping on. So let's just prepare ourselves to be really open. Ah, still in bed today. Good morning, Joniel. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the sunrise and the heart. Appreciate it. So we're just going to do some breathing just to open ourselves up, especially our heart space, to receive this message because it's a really powerful message. It's one of those messages that helps you transcend your day-to-day -day beliefs. So nice deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, wiggling your shoulders a little bit, listening to all the grinding in your neck, in through the nose, good morning Susan, out through the mouth, just appreciating this moment, what is there in this moment that you can appreciate? The heat just kicked on, so that's a good thing. I've got my glass of water here. Life is good. What are the things that you're appreciating right here, right now? Just feel that swelling in your heart space, even for the little things, your cup of tea or coffee, whatever it is. Just step it into that appreciation. Good morning, Gwen. Glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. We're just doing some breathing just to open up our heart space, to receive this new message, to make the most of this message today, to apply it all day long and beyond, hopefully. Good morning, Cindy. Welcome. Glad you are here. Awesome. So for those of you who like to follow along, second verse, same as the first, Outrageous Openness by Tosha Silver, Letting the Divine Take the Lead. And as I was grabbing the book, I thought to myself, we've had this book a fair amount recently. And I'm like, well, I hope we end up with something new, something we haven't heard before. It, it's all things we've all heard before, right? But sometimes it's said in a way that really connects, really lights us up, really gives us food for thought, something to chew on. And I think today's reading is going to do that. And it dovetails with some of the readings we've had in the past. So that's helpful too, because the more often we hear it, the more it resonates. And sometimes a particular way of hearing it resonates more than others. Have you had that situation where you've said something over and over and over and then someone else says it and the person you were trying to get to understand it goes, oh, Joe said blah, 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 blah. And you're like, I've been saying that. Good morning, Carolyn. Welcome. Glad you are here. But however Joe delivered it was, and whatever openness needed to be there on the part of the delivery <laughs> was there. So th then sometimes I just think that's so hilarious. Or you don't understand something. Don't understand it. Don't understand. You hear it, hear it, hear it. You don't get, like when I was, I don't know, 10, 11, somewhere in that ballpark, the joke going around school was, how do you get down off an elephant? You don't get down off an elephant, you get down off a duck. I did not understand that. Good morning, Janine, glad you are here. Good morning, good morning. Until at one point, at some point, after hearing it over and over and over, it clicked. Dawn, down was not down, down was the fuzzy stuff. Then it made sense. But I use that example often in my life. Okay, yeah, it's just a perceptual shift that needs to occur in order for this to make sense. Wonder when that perceptual shift will happen. Okay, spirit, I'm ready. Where's my perceptual shift so I get this? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, same thing. Good morning, Mel, glad you're here, welcome, welcome. So, outrageous openness, letting the divine take the lead. Our chapter is on page 192, at least it's 192 in my book. And like I say, I always know when we're going to have a good reading when she has two quotes at the beginning of it. So this one is called, A World Without You. A World Without You. The first quote is from Jesus. Be in this world, but not of it. 
be in this world, but not of it. So basically what he's saying there is be aware that you are timeless. Be aware that walking around in this meat suit is a time-limited endeavor. You go on, but the meat suit doesn't, okay? Second quote is from the Bhagavad Gita. There's never been a time when you and I have not existed, nor will there be a time when we will cease to be. Therefore, play the role you're meant for right now. That was very helpful to me because I felt like I had to cram all this living into this lifetime. And when I realized, even when we vacate the meat suit, we're, we're in, the, in the ethers, we're out there. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It moves into, through, and out of form. That's talking about us, <laughs> okay? So I don't need to get it all done in this lifetime. Neither do you. So here we go. A world without you. Every yoga practice ends with Shavasana, the corpse pose. Laura, one of my teachers, always says it's the most advanced of all. Complete detachment from this world, unclenching the spirit and the mind. Just hear those words again. I mean, to me, that's a beautiful way to capture what we're accomplishing there. Accomplishing. Yeah, there we go. Corpse pose. It's the most advanced of all, complete detachment from this world, unclenching the spirit and the mind. The other day in her class, we all entered Shavasana as usual, lying flat on our backs, eyes closed, palms to the sky. I could hear the drone of Oakland traffic, an ambulance screeched by, some hip hop blared for a moment and subsided, the smell of fresh rolls from the bakery below wafted up, as we drifted into deep relaxation, Laura said, imagine that you have already left this planet and imagine that the world goes on without you perfectly, all is well. I had already experienced this during that long stretch in the 80s when I was ill. She had her adrenal system crash and uh, was out of commission for a long time. Unable to work, walk, or even think straight. I was dead to this world without being fully gone. Though I eventually healed, the experience completely altered my being. Before, I thought, like a true Capricorn with four Saturn squares, that work was my raison did to, I'm not French, reason for existing. Okay. In fact, my overexertion probably spawned the whole mess. Desperately needing to be liked, well-regarded, and most of all to matter, I worked night and day. But once my collapse came, I eerily saw the world continue quite well. And when I recovered in 1990, I was transformed. Nothing mattered as before. Seeing how easily I could be replaced or forgotten has been an odd gift and revelation. Once I returned from the underworld, I couldn't believe my incredible good luck just to eat a bowl of coconut soup in a Thai restaurant or walk on a windy beach. So appreciating the little things, right? The wonder never went away. So I like th this next part is sort of like a, a little poem prose kind of thing. So just breathe this in. Let's do a couple of nice deep breaths. Opening up to receiving this part of the message. It's good to know both your specialness and your utter dispensability. Then you can let go and embrace it all. You can play your role in this exquisite, absurd story. With complete abandon. You can be a melting snowflake, a drifting leaf, or a nature spirit dancing in a pond. And if you touch any heart with what you do for the brief moments you are here, that is enough. So what are your reactions? That, that the little chapter, what are your reactions? What does this stir for you? What thoughts do you have? What feelings do you have? I love that tension of holding those seeming opposites, specialness and utter dispensability. Specialness and utter dispensability. And we hear that all the time, right? There's no one exactly like you. There never has been anyone exactly like you. There will never be anyone exactly like you. 
that specialness. And yet, when we're gone, the world goes on. The world goes on. Before we came, the world went on, right? While we're here, the world goes on. <laughs> kind of get the, get the hang of this thing, right? I'd love to see what some of your thoughts are. What does this trigger for you? What do you... What do you? What are your yeah buts and what ifs about it? What are your um, uncomfortable feelings about it? Because in America, North America, we have issues with death and dying, and to have this opportunity to look ahead to the world without us, how will things be without us? It really does free us up. It really does free us up. What can I do while I'm here? What would I like to do while I'm here? Who can I be while I'm here? Who's the real me? And it's good to bring that forward. Who is that real me? And where she, where she says this point of desperately needing to be liked, well regarded, and most of all to matter, I worked night and day. Good morning, Michelle. Glad you are here. So basically she was killing herself trying to make things be a certain way as opposed to, yes, this one is going to take some chewing on. Absolutely, I agree. When we're in this world but not of it, it opens up great space. It opens up the opportunity for us to move through this world from that curious observer perspective, right? We're here, we're living a life, we're playing our roles, we're doing our thing, but we can have that detachment of, isn't that interesting? I just observed this, or I just saw that. Isn't this interesting? So I want to read a couple of the parts again, just to give you that, that those things to chew on, right? There has never been a time when you and I have not existed, nor will there be a time when we will cease to be. Therefore, play the role you're meant for right now. Play the role you're meant for right now. And again, Shavasana, the corpse pose. It's the most advanced of all. Complete detachment from this world, unclenching the spirit and the mind. I really struggled with Shavasana when I first started doing yoga. It's like, why are we just laying here? Let's do something. I get it now. I get it now, right? So let's see what else was there. I'm going to read that last part. The wonder never went away. When we can step back into that curious observer place, we have more opportunity for wonder. It is good to know both your specialness and your utter dispensability. Then you can let go and embrace it all. You can play your role in this exquisite, absurd story with complete abandon. You can be a melting snowflake, a drifting leaf, or a nature spirit dancing in a pond. And if you touch any heart with what you do, for the brief moments you are here, that is enough. Yes, about being present. About being. Th thank you for posting that, Cindy. Fabulous. Yes, being in the moment and being who we are in the moment, not being who we think people want us to be. And for women in particular, that is a challenge given our indoctrination as we're young, right? So... Today, I wish for you the opportunity to step into that curious observer, to observe your own specialness and your utter dispensability, and just flow with that. Just be with that. Ponder that. Chew on that, as Cindy says. So, have an awesome Tuesday. I will see you again tomorrow. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye.